So, good afternoon, everybody. Happy Vishu. So, uh, today's uh, topic is Apexogenesis and Apexification. We are going, uh, we are just giving you a brief idea about Apexogenesis. Uh, so, these are all the different stages of uh, root development. Uh, in all our stages, it has been from the stage 6. After the stage 6 is the crown completion. After that, the, these are the different stages how the root development occurs. And this is the final with the complete closed apex. So, problem arises when you get a tooth like this. So, this kind of tooth is called as the blunderbuss canal. Okay, where the apex, apex of the tooth, the canal is more wider than the cervical part. So this kind of a tooth is called as, uh, this kind of a canal is called as a blunderbuss canal. So, uh, you will come across this situation only in two cases. Either it can, it is because of a trauma, the tooth is damaged because of the trauma and you need to treat it, or the tooth is uh, carious and uh, you need to treat carious tooth. So, that condition only you will be coming across with a, an apex or a tooth with a blunderbuss canal. So, you are having two options uh, for treatment. You can do vital pulp therapy with the proper indications, or you can go for a non vital therapy. So, first we will be talking about an apexogenesis. So, apexogenesis comes under the uh, vital pulp therapy, where, as the definition says, it's a vital pulp therapy procedure which allows the continu continued physiological development and formation of the root apex, where the entire uh, root apex is formed by itself. You are not inducing to form or you are not forming an extra barrier or you are not placing a material to form uh, and closing the barrier and normal root and development occurs that is called as apexogenesis so uh, it enhances the continued dentine formation and also it, uh, it to bring about the apical development and closure we have, we have normal apical closure the apical foramen closure also will be normal so main rationale why you are doing apexogenesis is uh, for the normal root and development means the whatever which is growing by itself will be much better than we are making it uh, or you are inducing it and uh, get a, uh, a pulp of an immature teeth has a significant reparative potential means uh, young permanent tooth the pulp since the uh, blood supply for the pulp uh, pulp tissue is more reparative or regenerative capacity of the tooth is much more when compared to that of a uh, mature tooth and prevascularization and uh, repair occurs more efficiently uh, more efi efficiently to than open apex now coming to the goals what we achieve uh, uh, by doing uh, apexogenesis so the main goal is to sustaining the viable herdwig you, you guys all know that herdwig epithelial root sheet is the one which helps in the formation of the normal root enclosure so sustaining a viable root the uh, root sheet and to allow continued development of the uh, root length. So the entire normal root length also will be formed and the favorable crown root ratio also will be formed if you are going for an apexogenesis. Second thing is, as we all know, the maintaining the pulpal vitality help, uh, help in maturation of the tooth. And the thirdly, uh, promoting the root enclosure to create a natural apical constriction. Coming to the indications. Indications, the first one is the fracture to the <laughs> The fracture has occurred and suddenly the patient had come to you and you are taking an x-ray and you are seeing that the, uh, the apex is open. This is the first way you can go for a pulp, uh, apexogenesis. Second is the carious exposure. And again, carious exposure which is not an irreversible condition. Okay, so Which is not an irreversible condition, condition or an abscess or a fistula is there. You can't go for an apexogenesis. And next is the traumatic luxation. Now the contraindications, the figures are self-explanatory where the tooth is discolored tooth, non-vital tooth, carious, long-standing carious lesion, where the carious, carious lesion is there, the patient is having pain, night pain, all those things, the apexogenesis apex, apex, apex is contraindicated, then uh, root fractures and root stems and the vertical uh, uh, tooth fracture, all those cases, apexogenesis procedure is contraindicated. Now how you can keep the tooth light? or pulp therapy. All pulp therapy procedures, all the vital pulp therapy procedures, which means that your indirect pulp capping, direct pulp capping, and pulpotomy. All these things can uh, cause the normal root enclosure where 
you your entire pulpal tissue the entire pulpal tissue will be vital so in these cases when you are doing these three cases uh, you can get a pathogenesis done so when you when somebody asks you a question saying that what are all the procedures for these are the three procedures you can say either direct pulp capping or direct pulp capping or a hypotomy and uh, this apexification and apexogenesis these two things are done only in young permanent tooth not on the primary tooth it's all only done in the young permanent tooth now coming to the materials used materials most commonly for direct capping direct capping and all, all things you guys know that is calcium hydroxide or mta and for pulpotomy i uh, you would have uh, read no retro surgery laser all those things what the materials that is used for uh, indirect pulp capping or direct pulp capping or pulpotomy all these three things are used for an apexogenesis procedure depending upon which procedure you are doing coming to the procedure so first first of all you need for a proper access preparation if i am talking about pulpotomy one so if it is a uh, pulp capping one then uh, you should it, remove the carious dentin or uh, infected dentin and uh, place a calcium hydroxide paste and uh, place a restoration or uh, if it is a uh, direct pulp capping uh, when the pulp is exposed due to mechanical uh, trauma or because when you excavate again on the surface where the pulp is exposed there you are supposed to give the calcium hydroxide and then restoration give it after that uh, uh, after 6 months follow up you need to do the permanent restoration i am now here i am thinking about the pulp paper you are doing an access restoration the entire the coronal pulp tissue is removed and you need to pack calcium hydroxide the uh, coronal surface this is the diagram which shows the where your calcium hydroxide has been packed in the uh, cervical i mean coronal after, after six months you need to call the patient you need to check what you check is this this one how the root and development is occurring here you can see that this is the one the tooth was how it was and when you do a pulpotomy uh only the coronal pulp tissue is removed the entire uh, radicular pulp is uh, vital and you can see here the uh, epithelial root sheet is forming and uh, the root formation is happening okay so this is exactly what is called as an exogenesis so coming to an exogenesis in young permanent tooth which is non vital or you can say uh, it has a maturogenesis or you can say it as a revascularization that is an, uh, again a newer method that has come so where what you do is if there is a periapical infection is there or inflammation is there what we do is uh, we have to do an access preparation so we have to do an access preparation and uh, do all the pulp extirpations and everything has to be done and uh, you have to keep an intracanal medicament so that the canal is sterile after that you over instrument you can see this diagram b uh, you can over instrument it so that you are purposefully uh, you know uh, purposefully stimulating periapical tissue so that the bleeding occurs so when the bleeding occurs the bleeding will be entering into the canal so that is the third, third diagram where the blood flows into the canal and of what happens after the blood flows into the canal it will become a clot so this clot acts as a scaffold because this clots contain lot of uh, what do you say growth factors so that that helps in the normal regeneration of the so after the clot is formed what you can do is you can place an mta here give a nice coronal restoration so and you can see in this diagram the entire uh, uh, the root and development is occurred so this procedure is called as revascularization this is not an apexogenesis procedure this is a revascularization or maturogenesis you can say and this is done only in the uh, non vital or uh, you know the tooth with the chronic reversible pulpitis all those cases only you can try this next case is uh, tooth is non vital and you you don't have a scope for doing an apexogenesis or but imagine that the tooth is having an abscess or uh, tooth is uh, the pulp is irreversibly damaged where you cannot uh, do any preservation of the pulp so in that case there is only one option to close the apex that is the apexification so uh, apexification is defined as a method to induce development of the root apex of an immature plus tooth by formation of an osteocementum or a bone like tissue where here you can see it's an open apex so what you you do is you will place some material so that uh, trying to close the apex either by a bone like material or a formation of an osteocementum now when 
when the epicification has to be done. So epicification has to be done in an tooth, an open apex, an incomplete root development tooth. Uh, it can be either due, I mean, the exposure of the pulp has occurred or either due to the carious exposure or because of a trauma. And excessive apical resorption due to trauma or apical pathosis or an uh, orthodontic treatment. So, can you, uh, when can you obturate or can you obturate the tooth uh, just like that? When the, uh, if the tooth with the apex is open, can you, uh, can you able to Post the, I mean, can you able to obturate the tooth? It's because it is uh, because for a proper obturation to happen, it should have a proper stop or an no uh, at the apical stop should be there. So in the case of an open apex, there won't be any uh, no heart tissue stop against gutta percha can be. Packed. So ex exactly your entire gutta percha, if you try to obturate in with, with an open apex, what happens is the entire gutta percha you won't get it stop first first up, first and foremost. Second thing is. The entire gutta percha will be uh, into the tissue. So that will be again causing an infection to the tooth. Second thing is, will be weakening the root dentine and the root dentine, there are higher chances of fracture of the root dentine if you are, you are not getting a proper uh, apical stop. Then, apexification is preferred over RCT. First thing is, you have to, uh, the tooth is open apex or a blunderbuss canal is there. And if you see the open apex uh, picture, I will be showing it later. Uh, the dentine thickness on either side of the wall is very thin. So the chances of fracture of the root is if are uh, very high. We are not doing a performing an apexification and going ahead with the RCT. And the last is the absolutely when obtaining it, the entire canal should be dry. The drying of the canal should happen. Not only you can uh, clip the gutta percha and obturate it. So if the apex is open. And the drying, the complete drying of the canal won't be achieved. So, major objective or major rationale of doing epoxification is to induce either closure of an open apical third of root uh, canal or formation of an apical calcific barrier against which the obturation can be or against which you can do an obturation and save the tooth. So, again, materials used, these are called lithium materials uh, that is used. Uh, uh, apexification procedure and out of which uh, for in your exam point of view you should know about uh, peroxide and uh, NTA and biodentine. These are the three uh, latest materials and uh, you will be getting questions on these three materials actually. Now coming to the procedure of apexification. So procedure is first, first what we have to do is you have to do a proper axis cavity preparation then uh, you have to extirpate the pulpal <laughs> tissue. The entire pulpal extirpation has to be done. Then you have to go for a biomedical You have to go for the biomedical treatment. The medicament has to be paid. And uh, you have to place a calcium hydroxide at the apex. At the apex, you have to keep the calcium hydroxide after proper drying of the canal. And then you can see here the calcium hydroxide is placed. Then uh, you are. Uh, the entire uh, you have to place an interim restorative material and once the once you achieve you have to nicely obturate the tooth and uh, you can go for a, a coronal restoration so these are all the first visit what you are supposed to do for a First is the rubber dam isolation, access opening, removal of the necrotic pulp, working length determination, and, uh, more of the infected dentine from the two canals, and infected debris. Canal has to be tried. Then the calcium hydroxide has to be placed at the working length. Where you have got the working length, there you are supposed to place the calcium hydroxide and you have to give a temporary restorations. Second visit, in the second visit, in calcium hydroxide, what you need to do is you have to follow it up at six months and 24 months based upon the apical closure that occurs. So how you are supposed to evaluate the apical closure is to take the radiograph. You have to take the radiograph and uh, you have to see the previous picture, previous radiograph and see how, what is the difference that has occurred from the first radiograph to the second, whether the uh, root, has formed, root formation is formed properly, uh, whether the closing of the apex is happening properly. So if the, everything is fine, then you can proceed with the 
root canal. Now, the follow in the follow up, uh, these are all the things you need to take uh, into consideration when you are following up in each visit. I have told no, every six months to 24 months, you need to follow up the patient. So, first thing you need to check is any absence of any uh, fistula or sinus has to be an absence of uh, uh, absence or decrease in mobility formation of a calcific barrier calcific bridge or calcific barrier has to be formed at apex and continued apical development and absence of any internal or a uh, periapical radiolucency because periapical radiolucency shows that there is a secondary infection that is developing and evidence of uh, firm top clinically or radiographically when you are keeping the file of file at the at the working length to be able to get a top the apex which shows that there is a formation of a calcific bar calcific barrier so in this picture it is very clear uh, uh, this is the one uh, the calcium dioxide is uh, calcium dioxide open, uh, open, open is there and the apex is closed you can see the blunderbuss configuration is gone the apex is closed there's no radiographic change, nothing is there. Uh, the uh, the uh, uh, thin osteoid uh, like layer is formed at the apex. There's no radiographic evidence of uh, barrier short of the apex. When you're keeping the calcium hydroxide very short of the apex, this is what happens. So, uh, when you keep the hydroxide uh, at the apex, you need to keep it at the working length. When you're keeping at the working length, only will be able to get a normal. Root and closure. This is the one. This is how it should come. These are all the. Uh, uh, no, if you are not keeping it properly, this is what happens. And when you keep it in a blunderbuss canal, blunderbuss canal means uh, it, the canals will be like this. So this is how the formation of the cementum or, or osteo cementum or a, uh, the apical closure. That is how it happens. Now the major disadvantage of the conventional technique for patient. Uh, if you're keeping a follow-up and the patient is not coming on time for the follow-up, then there are higher chances of failure and giving a temporary material or temporary seal is being given at the, at, at the access preparation. So if the temporary seal fails or if there is any fracture of the tempor uh, temporary material, then again, the higher chances of reinfection and uh, the treatment might be wrong. So in order to avoid that, a uh, single visit epoxification procedure has come. So in single visit epoxification, what you do is, after the single visit epoxification has to be done with an MTA. So the same procedure of uh, uh, the uh, access opening and all that, all that procedure is same. So instead of keeping calcium hydroxide, you need to keep MTA at the working length. So you have to keep the working uh, MTA at the working length, uh, and uh, you you need to give a close dressing and send it. I mean, uh, and have to recall the patient the next day because within one day. With, uh, for the MTA to set, it, it, it takes nearly 24 hours to set and form a hard mass. So, uh, what happens is after that, you need to next day you can record and you can obturate the uh, tooth and you can give a, uh, a GIC or a composite as a coronal restoration and then go for a crown. Okay, so this is what is called as a single visit apexification. Bar. But doing the procedure and uh, entirely within one or two days, the entire procedure is being completed. Plus the other one, calcium so that is calcium hydroxide. That is how the MTA. The same procedure can be done for biodentine also. Biodentine also the same procedure can be done. Uh, 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 you can recall the patient next day, and the RCT can be continued. So this is how the picture, this is how the picture shows that uh, it's an immature apex. Apex is not closed. You can see here in, uh, very clearly in the diagram. And uh, here, when you see the uh, apical closure, you can see the apical closure here. It was open here. And now an apical stop has formed. Then you have placed an MTA. That's why the apical print has formed. And you are uh, uh, obturating with the aperture. And you are giving a GIC base and a composite thrust in restoration. So, in short, if you and uh, I would summarize it like this: if it is reversible pulpitis, and if it is a closed apex, you can directly go for a root canal therapy. If it's reversible pulpitis uh, with an open apex, 
you can go for a vital pulp therapy that is either your pulp capping or hypotomy can be done so that this part comes under this part comes under your exogenesis if it is in reversible pulp with a necrotic pulp with a closed apex again you can go for a root canal therapy but if it is an open apex either you have to go for a root, root and closure root and closure either you can do it with an mga or a calcium hydroxide or a bioengine or you can go for a maturogenesis or or pulpal regeneration so these are the three topics we covered today yeah, these are the three topics we covered today and uh, these are the questions that you can come across during i mean in the exams that is apexification versus apexogenesis this is a three mark i mean four mark question as well as eight mark question mta apexification is uh, last time it has come for uh, i mean short essay it has come or it, it can be again asked as a single visit apexification the same these both are the same then the management of at least class 3 and class 4 factors when we when we talk about trauma these are all the things which again it will uh, the same procedure will be repeated at that time also okay thank you any questions